VLAN is a switch feature. It creates a group of devices that share broadcast messages in the local network. A broadcast message generated in one VLAN does not reach another VLAN. As we know, a DHCP server and clients use broadcast messages to communicate. Hence, if we configure a DHCP server in a VLAN and DHCP clients in another VLAN, clients request messages will never reach the DHCP server. DHCP works when both the DHCP server and clients are available in the same VLAN. If we have multiple VLANs in a network, we have to configure a separate DHCP pool for each VLAN. To explain the DHCP server configuration process, I will use Packet Tracer Network Simulator software. It allows us to configure and run essential Cisco devices in a simulated environment. You can use any network simulator software of your choice. You can also use real Cisco devices to practice. DHCP configuration steps are the same on all platforms. Add a router to the workspace. You can choose any router. We will use it to provide connectivity between different VLANs. Add a switch to the workspace. We will configure VLANs on it. Add some end devices. We will use these devices as DHCP clients. I am adding four end devices. I will create two VLANs. I will keep two PCs in each VLAN. Based on the number of VLANs you want to create, you can add more or fewer end devices. Now we need to connect these devices. To connect these devices, we will use copper straight through cables. To connect a PC to a switch and a switch to a router, we use a copper straight through cable. Although you can connect the router to any available switch port, you should connect it to the fastest port of the switch. This switch has two types of ports, fast Ethernet and Gigabit Ethernet. Gigabit Ethernet is faster than fast Ethernet. I will connect the router to Gigabit Ethernet 0 1 port. Now we need to connect end devices to the switch. You can connect them to random switch ports. But it would be better to connect them in a sequence. I will connect the first PC to fast Ethernet 0 1, and the second PC to fast Ethernet 0 2. I will keep these PCs in the first VLAN. Connect the third PC to fast Ethernet 0 3 port, and the fourth PC to fast Ethernet 0 4 port. A VLAN is a group of devices that share broadcast messages. All switches have one default VLAN called VLAN 1. By default, all switch ports belong to VLAN 1. Since all switch ports belong to VLAN 1, they share broadcast messages. Switches allow us to create and implement custom VLANs. To create custom VLANs, use the VLAN command in global configuration command mode. This command creates a new VLAN and enters VLAN configuration mode. VLAN configuration mode allows us to configure VLAN specific options. You do not need to configure any VLAN specific options here. We will use VLANs with the default configuration. Create the second VLAN. Use a different VLAN ID for it. The switch uses VLAN ID to identify VLANs. Now we need to assign these VLANs to interfaces. To assign a VLAN to an interface, enter interface configuration mode. In interface configuration mode, Use the switch port access VLAN command. This command needs VLAN ID as an argument. Exit interface configuration mode. We will configure VLAN 10 on fast Ethernet 1 and 2. On fast Ethernet 3 and 4, we will configure VLAN 20. Switch ports can work in two modes, access and trunk. In access mode, it works only with a single VLAN. In trunk mode, it works with all VLANs. Access mode is the default mode on all ports. We need to change the default mode to the trunk mode on the port connected to the router. This command changes the default port mode to the trunk. Exit interface configuration mode. Let us do a quick recap of all commands that we run on the switch. We use these commands to enter global configuration mode. We use these commands to create VLAN and enter VLAN configuration mode. VLAN configuration mode allows us to configure VLAN specific options. We use these commands to assign VLANs to ports. We assign VLAN 10 to fast Ethernet ports 1 and 2. We assign VLAN 20 to fast Ethernet ports 3 and 4. We use this command to configure this port as a trunk port. You need to convert an access port to a trunk port only if it carries data from multiple VLANs. In this lab, this port will forward data from both VLANs to the router. We will use the router to provide connectivity between both VLANs. In this network, we have two VLANs. For these VLANs, we need to create two DHCP pools, one for VLAN 10 and another for VLAN 20. In the DHCP pool configuration, first, we create a range of excluded IP addresses. 
the DHCP server does not offer these IP addresses to DHCP clients. To create a DHCP pool, we use the IP DHCP pool command. This command needs a pool name as an argument. You can choose any descriptive name for the pool. It creates the DHCP pool and enters DHCP pool configuration mode. In DHCP pool configuration mode, we need to configure three things, the gateway router's IP address, the DNS server's IP address, and a range of IP addresses. The default router command configures the default gateway's IP address. The DNS server command configures the DNS server's IP address. The network command defines a range of IP addresses. The DHCP server will provide IP addresses from this range to DHCP clients. Since each VLAN belongs to a separate IP segment, we cannot use the same IP pool for two VLANs. We will use this pool for VLAN 10. Now, let us create a pool for VLAN 20. We will use the same commands. First, we will define the excluded IP addresses. After it, we will create a new pool and enter DHCP pool configuration mode. In the DHCP pool configuration mode, we will define the default gateway's IP address, the DNS server's IP address, and a range of IP addresses. Define an IP range that is different from the IP range of the first pool. Exit pool configuration mode. We have created two DHCP pools. But the DHCP server will not use these pools until we assign these pools to VLANs. To assign a DHCP pool to a VLAN, we have to configure an IP address on the VLAN from the DHCP pool. A switch treats a VLAN as an interface. You can manage it in the same way you manage other interfaces. Enter interface configuration mode. Use the IP address command to assign the IP address. Start the interface and exit interface configuration mode. Follow the same steps and assign an IP address to VLAN 20 from its DHCP pool. The DHCP server uses the IP address you configure on the VLAN interface to select the DHCP pool. Exit interface configuration mode. That's all configuration we need on the switch. We can check IP configuration on DHCP clients to verify DHCP pool configuration. Change the IP configuration mode to DHCP. Wait for a few seconds. Let the PC obtain an IP address from the DHCP server. This PC belongs to VLAN 10. It should receive an IP configuration from the IP pool that we assigned to VLAN 10. As we can see here, it received an IP configuration from the pool that we configured for VLAN 10. We configured two PCs in each VLAN. Let us verify the pool configuration on the second PC. Change the IP configuration mode to DHCP. As we can see here, it also received an IP configuration from the pool that we configured for VLAN 10. It verifies the DHCP pool configuration for VLAN 10. Now let us verify the DHCP pool configuration for VLAN 20. We attach these PCs to ports that we configured in VLAN 20. These PCs should receive IP configuration from the pool that we configured for VLAN 20. As we can see here, it received an IP configuration from the pool that we configured for VLAN 20. We can also check the IP configuration on the second PC. It should also receive an IP configuration from the VLAN 20's pool. As we can see here, it also received an IP configuration from the VLAN 20's pool. It verifies the DHCP pool configuration for the VLAN 20. Devices in different VLANs cannot communicate directly. They can communicate only through a router. To verify it, you can test connectivity between devices available within a single VLAN and different VLANs. These PCs belong to the same VLAN. As we can see here, these PCs have connectivity. These PCs belong to different VLANs. As we can see here, these PCs do not have connectivity. These PCs can communicate only through a router. A router routes packets between different IP networks. Since each VLAN belongs to a separate IP network, devices in different VLANs can communicate only through a router. When a router receives a data packet on a port, it reads the packet's destination address, finds the interface connected to the destination address in the routing table, and forwards the data packet from the interface connected to the destination. A router's port works as a default gateway for the connected network. For each network, you need a separate port on the router. For example, if you want to connect five local networks through a router, you need five ports on the router. Since each VLAN works as a separate local network, this requirement creates a big problem in a network that uses VLANs. For example, if a network has 60 VLANs, you need 60 router ports to connect them. 
Usually, routers have two or four Ethernet ports. If you use routers having four Ethernet ports, you need 15 routers to connect 60 VLANs. Routers are expensive. Many networks cannot afford routers only to provide connectivity between different VLANs. Cisco solves this problem by adding a feature called interface virtualization. Interface virtualization allows you to create virtual interfaces on a physical interface. For example, if a router has an Ethernet port, you can convert it into many virtual Ethernet ports. Each virtual port works as a separate port. You can assign virtual ports to VLANs. If you use virtual interfaces, you need only one router port to connect all VLANs. Creating virtual interfaces is also a simple process. You need to run only two commands to use virtualization on an interface. These commands are the no IP address and no shutdown. You need to run these commands in the interface configuration mode of the interface you want to convert into virtual interfaces. Exit interface configuration mode. Now, you can create virtual interfaces on this port. To create a virtual interface and enter interface configuration mode, we use the same command we use on the physical interface. The only difference is we append the physical interface's number to make a unique number for the virtual interface. In interface configuration mode, we need to configure two options, the protocol type of the incoming traffic and an IP address. This port will receive traffic from a trunk port. A trunk port uses the dot one q protocol. If the port receives traffic from multiple VLANs, we also need to specify the VLAN whose traffic should this virtual interface process. Now we need to assign an IP address to this interface. Assign the IP address you configured as the default router in the VLAN 10's IP pool. Exit interface configuration mode. Use the same commands again and create one more virtual interface. Assign VLAN 20 to this virtual interface. Assign the IP address you configured as the default router in the VLAN 20's IP pool. Exit interface configuration mode. That's all configuration we need on the router. To verify router configuration, we can test connectivity between different VLANs again. We configured two PCs in each VLAN. We can also send ping requests to the second PC. As we can see here, it is getting replies from this PC also. It verifies router configuration. On the switch, we have two commands to view DHCP statistics. These commands are the IP DHCP binding and IP DHCP pool. Both commands run in privileged exec mode. The IP DHCP binding command lists the allocated IP addresses from all pools. These are the allocated IP addresses. These are the MAC addresses of the clients who receive these IP addresses. The type of allocation is automatic. The show IP DHCP pool command lists DHCP statistics. This command needs the pool's name as an argument. The output of this command displays the number of total IP addresses in the configured range, available IP addresses, used IP addresses, and least IP addresses. That's all for this video. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback about this video, please share them in the comment section given below.